We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. It's not at all a surprise when you're in a relationship, whether it's inside a family or with friendships or at the work setting, that there can be certain tensions or strains that come up. I mean, that, that's just part of the equation. We don't think alike. We don't prioritize alike. The mark of maturity, though, is knowing how to manage those tensions in a healthy way. And when you're dealing with narcissists, eh, good luck on that one because they carry so much of their own internal chaos and turmoil that they just simply don't want to have to look at it and they don't want to have to take responsibility. So what they'll do is they'll take the turmoil that they can generate and flip it around onto you and then somehow their turmoil, which then creates frustrations in you, then comes with a certain amount of expectation that they have toward you. Now, let me see if I can help you unravel this. Um, <clears throat> let me give you a few examples of how this can work. Let's suppose that a narcissist has a, a temper tantrum. They're, they're in a rage or they're angry and they're harsh. And so what they'll do is they'll say, well, the problem is you don't listen very well or you don't coordinate with me. You see, my temper is caused by you. Or let's suppose that narcissist wastes a lot of money. And so then they'll flip that around. Instead of taking responsibility, they'll say, well, this would never happen if you weren't so tight-fisted. You're always monitoring every penny that I uh, ever spend, and somehow it becomes your fault. Or let's, let's ratchet, uh, ratchet it up a little bit. Let's suppose that narcissistic person has had an extramarital affair. And so you know they, they may uh, say, okay, I shouldn't have done that, <clears throat> but eventually... They'll let you know, well, the reason that happened is because you are not loving enough or you're not caring enough or you don't understand me like other people knew, uh, do and how I uh, deserve. Or it, come, it could be that someone at work has offended you and so uh, you're the, uh, has, has offended the narcissist, excuse me. And the narcissist may say, well, the problem is not me being offended, but the problem is you being incompetent. You never have my back. You don't coordinate with me. You are the problem. Or another illustration, let's suppose that person, uh, that narcissist goes into a major shutdown mode. They become passive aggressive and give you the stonewall treatment. And uh, if you ever hear, hear from them, they'll say something like, well, the problem is I just can't communicate with you. I mean, you're impossible. It's like talking to a brick wall when in fact they're the ones who put up the brick wall. Or it may be that that narcissist is someone who's known for pushing heavy opinions but instead of focusing on the fact that, you know, maybe that's a bit derogatory when I do that, what they'll say is, well, my problem is I'm surrounded by idiots and it wouldn't be heavy opinions if I just didn't have these idiots. You see what I'm saying? They can create all sorts of strain and tension and turmoil. And then what they'll do is they'll flip it back around toward you and somehow make you the problem. They go into victim shaming. They can be, become verbally abusive. They can uh, uh, use character assassination or belittlement toward you. Uh, have you heard that, uh, uh, that acronym, DARVO, D-A-R-V-O? They deny, they attack, they reverse the roles, uh, and then uh, they become the victim and you become the offender, D-A-R-V-O. Uh, deny, attack, reverse, uh, victim, and offender. That's what they do, and they'll basically say, well, if there's some turmoil here, I'm the problem. I mean, I I'm the victim here, you're the problem. Now, <laughs> when, when that happens, it, it, uh, it's, it's frustrating enough to know that they have that uh, unwillingness to take responsibility then what you'll find is they have certain expectations of you and they, they want you to respond in certain ways. And this is where that turmoil becomes just completely crazy making. Let me see if I can run through some of the expectations that that narcissist can carry once they've generated the strain and the tension. 
Now, the first expectation they have of you, and, and there's not a real clean way to put this, uh, they expect you to be stupid, okay? And, and, and basically what they want you to do is they want you to suspend common sense and, uh, and they, want to deny, they want you to deny that they are problematic. And it, and it takes you having to dumb down whatever your uh, values and standards are. Uh, just, just go along with me, won't you? Another thing that they expect is they expect you to continue seeing them as credible. Uh, so even though they've blown up and even though they've been irresponsible and, and uh, moody and incredibly difficult and divisive, uh, basically, uh, they want to, to think, remember, uh, I, I still am the standard bearer here. And I'm the credible one. And even if I may have made mistakes, uh, keep in mind it was caused by you. And so they want you to continue to see them as being reliable and responsible and credible. Go figure. Or a third expectation they might have of you. And that is they expect you to suppress whatever legitimate anger you may feel. I mean, there are times when you can have some anger and hurt and tension and frustration, and it's valid to feel that way. Uh, and obviously you want to, uh, to uh, manage it in the cleanest and most constructive way as possible. But when that uh, narcissist creates this turmoil, it's like, wait a minute, you need to can that kind of stuff. Your anger is illegitimate and they uh, completely overlook the fact that so much of what they've generated in you is caused by their illegitimacy. Just suppress it, just can it, I don't wanna hear about it. Or a fourth expectation that they have is they expect you to exonerate them from their problematic presence in your life. Um, basically, they want you to say, I release you from any burden that you may have created. Uh, oh, great wise one, you're okay, and this isn't your problem. And they just want to get off the hook very quickly. A fifth expectation that they might have is they expect you to help them keep their public image unblemished. Sometimes some of the mistakes and some of the turmoil that they generate uh, is such that people start to find out. And it's like, hey, look, you can't say this about me and I don't want you to reveal these things about me. And so they want you to become a keeper of secrets or they want you to put on the, the, the good front like they tend to do. And in their way of thinking, well, I might be harmed if other people think that I'm not as good as, as I really believe that I am. So you need to protect me when I have created turmoil. That's an expectation they have. Not realistic, but that's their expectation nonetheless. And then in addition, a sixth expectation they have is they expect you to allow them to remain in the dominant position. You know, the bottom line is, even if my blunders or mistakes have caused humiliation in you, I'm still the one who should be in the power position. Now, when I enumerate these kind of things, it, it's like, really, people actually think this way? And the answer is, yeah, that's, that's their narcissism. And so you can uh, uh, approach that narcissist with some thinking inside that says, okay, let me get this straight. You've misbehaved and you've been very inappropriate. Okay, check. And then you've created misery for me and for other individuals. Okay, check on that one. And then I've been insulted and injured by you. Check on that one. And then my quality of life has gone down because of your presence in it check. And so you expect me then to defer to you. And the narcissist will say, right, that's exactly the point. That's the equation. You got it down. And, and, uh, and, and you, you look at this and think, this is nuts. These individuals can create the turmoil. Uh, and then they, ex they have all these expectations about how you're still supposed to cater to them. Now, if you put it like this to the narcissist and you say you're being very inappropriate, now they're going to come back with even more rebuttals. They might say something like, well, don't you believe in forgiveness? Or do you just want our problems to worsen because of your egotism? Or uh, so do you think you're perfect and you're somehow better than me? Is that the deal? Is that what I'm supposed to sign up for? Or they may say something like the old, can't we just move on? You know, let bygones be bygones. That's how they think. The, the narcissist doesn't want to, uh, to have anything to do if it doesn't allow them to be uh, with, with any kind of behavior that doesn't allow them to stay inside their entitlement. 
accountability in their mind is for losers and they're not a loser despite all of the strain and the tension they initiate and then perpetuate. They expect you to forgive in a blanket kind of way. Uh, no, no, uh, uh, no, no recompense coming back from them. They expect you to overlook the mess that they've created. They expect you to forget all the problematic uh, patterns that are there. And in the meantime, if they ever do admit that they've done wrong, somehow it winds up being your fault. Now, uh, they may ask, hey, look, uh, can't we can't we just uh, move on from all of this? And my response to that is, you know, I, I think I can move on from all of this. I'm learning lessons in the midst of this. And I'm learning that you're not someone that I can stay attached to. You're not someone that I find to be trustworthy. And indeed, I am going to move on. I'm going to learn from this. And uh, the net result is they can't be in your inner circle at all. And some of them are so toxic that they don't even, even be in your presence physically at all. That's what it comes down to. So it's sad to think that these people that will create the turmoil, they flip it around on you, and then they superimpose their expectations, but that's part of the game. That's part of their need for control and their uh, uh, uber-impressed feeling that they have towards themselves. I'm hoping that you can decide, you know, that's an option. If you want to be that way, you can be that way, but I'm not going to become your receptacle for all of this uh, 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 displacement that you're putting onto me, and I'm certainly not going to become your apologist. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good awareness of what you might be dealing with. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. I consider it an honor to be on the path with you. So uh, please, uh, we'll keep more videos coming at you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In addition, uh, you know that uh, there can be times when you need somebody to help you out, a therapist to help you out and uh, unpack some of the difficulties that they brought to the equation. If that's the case, you know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. I mean, literally yesterday, I spoke with somebody who was telling me about how uh, they had uh, sought someone out for better, from BetterHelp and it, it worked out so well. Um, please, as the need is there, uh, seek that out. We have a link below that will take you to their website. Uh, it's affordable and it's accessible. And I'm hoping that as that's a need that you would uh, take advantage of that possibility. Likewise, I have some courses and these are very extensive. I put a lot of work into them. It's like signing up for an online class and each course has at least 25 videos and then written documentation. We have the course Ready, Set, Connect about having healthy connections. This is me about establishing those boundaries that are so necessary. Free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. Also, I have my webinars that are presented in a much different kind of format, and all of this is available on our website, along with access to our podcast, um, uh, many, and when I say many, many articles, my books, etc. We have plenty of resources for you. Okay, narcissists will create uh, strain, tension, and turmoil. They'll flip it around onto you, that Darbo uh, mentality that they have. And then what they'll do is they'll uh, then let you know what the expectation is about how you're supposed to still cater to them. I'm not having that. And I'm hoping you're kind of in that same boat with me. I'm hoping that you can decide, well, when they bring their turmoil, that's a signal for me that says I need to do whatever is the opposite of that. I want to have steadiness and I want to have decency in my life because you see my commitment is to a lifestyle that's anchored in peace.